Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to look into our solar system. Our solar system, or basically everything in the nighttime sky or celestial sphere, uh, there has been two models that proposed how those objects move around us. We have the geocentric model, which goes back a little bit, which is basically the Earth-centered model. So Aristotle believed that the Earth was in the center of the space, or the universe and everything revolved around it like we see here in the geocentric model like i said the earth is centered and he also believed that earth was stationary it wasn't re rotating or revolving uh, we know this to be wrong at this point but here's our earth right here and everything anything and everything in the sky appeared to revolve around the earth it wasn't until later on that we came up with the heliocentric model. Here, helio meaning sun is the sun-centered model. And Copernicus developed this model where I believe the sun was the center and all the planets revolved around that. And also Earth rotated on its axis. This was a little bit better than the geocentric model and uh, really is kind of where we stand today. And just taking another look at it here which moves us to the planets. Like we said, these celestial objects were moving or revolving around us or the planet Earth. So when we go to page 15 of our science reference table, we see the solar system data chart. The solar system data chart has a, a pretty good amount of information about the sun, its planets, and our moon. It's got its mean distance from the sun in millions of kilometers right here, the period of revolution, basically how fast or its orbit um, around the sun, how long it takes, days and years, period of rotation at the equator, so rotating about its axis, the eccentricity, which we'll talk about later on, uh, definitely in class, its equatorial diameter, right here, and the mass of Earth, and we also look at the density of these planets. Uh, we'll be using this chart quite a bit in class, so we'll go more into it then. Okay, as we go in, we have our first set of planets, our inner planets, also known as the terrestrial planets, uh, because they're Earth-like planets. These are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. They're relatively small planets, and they have a, um, mostly are solid rock, have high densities, and few moons, if any at all. So here's Mercury. And you can see it's the closest planet to the sun. Uh, it's got 88 days for one revolution, no atmosphere, a huge temperature range of 600 degrees Fahrenheit between the hottest and coldest spots. It's a pretty big range, and it has visible impact craters. When we move on to Venus, right? This is the sister planet to Earth, um, roughly the same size, density, and mass of Earth. And um, it's got a very thick atmosphere of CO2 which causes for an immense greenhouse effect. So it is relatively hot, 867 degrees Fahrenheit. Like it says, the hottest planet that we have in our solar system. And it's due to that greenhouse effect. Then moving on to Earth, just a brief overview of these planets. Only planet with an atmosphere of free oxygen. Good, good thing for that. Liquid water also on the surface. We have life here. Uh, one moon, and we have a relatively large temperature range when you look at the coldest spots within like Antarctica uh, and some areas of the planet to basically the warmest of those deserts. You got a negative 92 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 136 degrees Fahrenheit. So a pretty decent range. And moving outward, we go to Mars. Uh, very thin atmosphere of CO2, very cold temperatures here also. Liquid water, um, there's evidence that liquid water may have been flowing over the surface at one time, which means that there possibly could have been life. Uh, it's also home to the largest volcano, uh, Olympus Mons. There's two moons and are also another pretty decent sized temperature range. Moving outwards, so we get to Mars, and then a little bit past there, we have our asteroid belt. Your asteroid belt is between Jupiter and Mars, and that's this whole region right here. Uh, we believe it's basically kind of like a fight or tug of war uh, between Jupiter and Mars with the gravity. So Jupiter's pulling that way, Mars pulling that way. So it never fully allowed for this material to coalesce into a planet or come together into a planet. So a little bit about asteroids. So we have our asteroid belt located between Mars and Jupiter. 
uh, and Jupiter's mass and gravity probably prevented these, like I said, from coming together uh, to form a fifth planet. And they have uh, irregular shapes, a lot of these asteroids. And there's just another close-up image of one. And uh, that's it. We're going to take a break here before we move into Jovian planets, the other set. And um, we'll go into them in the next screencast. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.